Sutra. You narrow-minded sound hearers are so inferior and ignorant that you are unable to penetrate through to the purity of the characteristic of reality. Now I will teach you. You should consider it well and do not become weary or negligent on the wonderful road to Bodhi. Commentary Shakyamuni Buddha said, You narrow-minded sound hearers, you people of the two vehicles are so inferior and ignorant. Your minds are very narrow and small. Your awareness is quite inferior. You are completely without knowledge. You sound hearers know only how to benefit yourselves and not how to benefit others. You know only how to attend you to yourselves and you pay no attention to the pain and suffering of other living beings. You are self-ending our hearts. Ignorant means to have no genuine knowledge. The knowledge spoken of here, however, is not that of ordinary worldly knowledge, but the genuine knowledge of the great vehicle Buddha Dharma. You lack knowledge of genuine great vehicle Buddhism. This also refers to the wonderful samadhi of the Suragama's primary meaning. You South hearers don't understand it. And so you are unable to penetrate through to the purity of the characteristic of reality. To penetrate through means to understand. At present, your minds are too heavily attached. The distinctions your mind makes are too profuse. For you to understand what lies in the great vehicle teaching, the great vehicle Buddha Dharma, the purity of the characteristic of reality. What is meant by the characteristic of reality? The characteristic of reality is no characteristic. This is the first explanation, yet nothing is without the characteristic of reality. That is the second explanation. All characteristics are produced from within it. That is what is meant by the characteristic of reality being no characteristic, yet nothing being without the characteristic of reality. The third explanation is that there are no characteristics and there is nothing which is not a characteristic. All dramas are born from the characteristic of reality. So the characteristic of reality is the basic substance of dharma. So you want to find the characteristic of reality since it is the basic substance of dharma. What is it ultimately like? You cannot see it. It just has been given a name. The characteristic of reality, that's all. And it as it says Lao Tzu said, the way that can be spoken of is not the eternal way. If you can talk about your way, if you can explain it, then it is not the eternal way. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. If you have a name that can be spoken out, it is not an eternal name. So then he said, the nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The name is the mother of the myriad things. That's what Lao Tzu's philosophy is like. All I'm doing now is bringing it up to help and make the doctrine clear. The characteristic of reality is true emptiness and it is also wonderful existence. Do you say that true emptiness is empty? It is not because within it is produced wonderful existence. Wonderful existence is certainly not existence. True emptiness is not empty and wonderful existence does not exist. Because it does not exist, it is said to be wonderful existence. Because it is not empty, it is said to be true emptiness. The characteristic of reality is the same doctrine. If you understand this doctrine, a thorough understanding of a single thing is a thorough understanding of everything. What is our self-nature like? The self-nature is like empty space. Would you say there, there is anything in empty space? There is absolutely everything in empty space, but you cannot see it. The existence within emptiness is wonderful existence. The lack of emptiness within emptiness is true emptiness. Since true emptiness is not empty, it is called wonderful existence. Since wonderful existence is not existence, it is called true emptiness. These two names are one. 
You investigate them in detail and find, however, that there is not even one. To give it a name is just to put a head on top of a head. You say, this is true emptiness and this is a wonderful existence. This is the characteristic of reality. That allows you to have a certain amount of attachment. As for genuine basic substance of drama, there isn't anything at all. By sweeping away all dramas, one becomes separated from all characteristics, as was said above. What is apart from all characteristics is drama. To be apart from all mundane marks is drama, but most people cannot separate themselves from those characteristics, and since they cannot leave those characteristics, they do not obtain all dramas. I can be separate from characteristics, you say. I don't attach myself to anything. Do you attach to anything? There was an earthquake a while ago. Were you afraid? I believe there were quite a few people who were very agitated when that earthquake came. That is just because you cannot be apart from characteristics. If you can be apart from characteristics, mouth time would come crashing down before you and you would not be startled. People who can turn things around are not frightened by any state they meet. If you aren't frightened, then there aren't any states. Why do states exist? Why are there demonic obstructions? Why can demons come and disturb your stomach? Because you move. As soon as you move, they sleep right in. If you don't move, no demon in existence will have any way to get at you. There won't be any mantra they can recite to move you. You say, then why was Mantaji able to recite a mantra and confuse Ananda in this sutra? It was just because he didn't have any samadhi. If he had samadhi, if Ananda had had the genuine Suragama samadhi, there would have been no need for the Buddha to speak the Suragama sutra or the Suragama mantra. And you and I would not be able to listen to the Suragama Sutra now or study the Suragama Mantra. So those were the causes and conditions. But if someone has samadhi, no matter what state arises, he or she will not be frightened. Now I will teach you, I will instruct you, Ananda. You should consider it well. This considering well does not refer to the kind of consideration Ananda has been using and speaking about. The word is the same, but it is not meant in the same way. Here, consider means that he should use his true mind to contemplate and investigate. It isn't that he should use his conscious mind that makes distinctions. And do not become wary or negligent on the wonderful road to body. Don't be lazy and slack off. Don't be insolent or perfunctory about it. Don't be muddled about the wonderful road to body. You should be particularly attentive and especially aware that this is the path to wonderful enlightenment. It is the way to become a Buddha. It is the wonderful Suragama Samadhi. If you have the wonderful Suragama Samadhi, you can walk to the position of wonderful enlightenment. That is the position of the fruition of Buddhahood. Buddhas are said to be wonderfully enlightened. And bodhisattvas are said to be the ones of equal enlightenment. They are equal to wonderful enlightenment. Fifty-five positions lie between the level of South heroes, of South hero through the levels of bodhisattvas to the position of wonderful enlightenment. The fifty-five position will be explained later on in the Suragama Sutra. The Two False Views, Chapter 2, Sutra Ananda said to the Buddha, World Honored One, It is still not clear in my mind what the Buddha, the World Honored One, has explained for me and for others like me about causes and conditions, spontaneity, the characteristic of mixing and uniting, and the absence of mixing and uniting. And now to hear further that, to see, seeing is not seeing arts, Yet another layer of confusion. Commentary. Ananda said to the Buddha, Wound honored one, it is still not clear in my mind what the Buddha, the wound honored one, has explained for me and for others like me. 
Would that for the sake of me a stout hero and for the sake of the condition enlightened ones, you have explained about causes and conditions, spontaneity, the characteristic of mixing and uniting, and the absence of mixing and uniting, characteristics which do not mix and unite. It is still not clear in my mind, Buddha, after hearing your explanation, we still have not become enlightened. We haven't understood. Our minds still haven't opened to enlightenment. And now to hear further that to see seeing is not seeing as yet another layer of confusion. Ananda is heckling the Buddha again. He says the, is, the expression of this kind of doctrine has caused him to add yet another layer of confusion, obscurity, and lack of understanding. It's like some people who have heard this much of the Surakama Sutra and are still saying, What is it talking about? I don't understand. I have listened for all these days, and the more of it I hear, the less clear I become. Sutra, humbly, I hope that with your vast compassion, you will bestow, bestow upon us the great wisdom I so as to show us the bright, pure, enlightened mind. After saying this, he wept, made obeisance, and waited to receive the holy instruction. Commentary. Humbly, I hope that with your vast compassion, I kneel before the Buddha and hope that the Buddha will bring forth great compassion and will bestow upon us the great wisdom eye. Give me the wisdom eye so as to show us the bright, pure, enlightened mind. Buddha, please explain the enlightened mind with its pure substance to us of the two vehicles the sound hearers, and the cognition enlightened ones. After saying this, at this point, Ananda was really nervous. So when he finished speaking, what do you suppose he did? He wept and made obeisance. He cried. He resorted to the talent of a child and stood crying before the Buddha, and he bowed his head just like a child who is deprived of his milk and sees his mother and cries for a drink of milk. Requesting the drum is like asking for milk to drink, and waited to receive the holy instruction. He waited for Shakyamuni Buddha to give him some drama milk to quell his hunger and confusion. Sutra Then the world honored one, out of pity for Ananda and the Great Assembly, began to explain extensively the wonderful path of cultivation of all samadhis of the great Dharani. Commentary Ananda's weeping brought the Buddha out of samadhi. He came out of samadhi to explain to him the doctrine of the way, the doctrine of wonderful samadhi. Then the world honored one, out of pity for Ananda. Then was when Ananda was famished and wanted milk to drink. It was when Ananda's confusion was so deep that he sought clarity. It was when Ananda wept and made obeisance. Basically, the Buddha is endowed with a heart of great kindness and great compassion. So when Ananda cried, the Buddha's compassionate heart was moved once again and he wished to quickly speak Dharma for him. Since Ananda was his youngest cousin, it was likely that here the Buddha showed him a special fondness and protection. And the great assembly. However, he didn't do this just for Ananda's sake, but for the sake for of everyone in the great assembly also. He began to explain extensively. Extensively means that he categorized and made distinctions as he explained the wonderful path of cultivation of all samadhis of the great Dharani. The Sanskrit word Dharani refers to mantras. Sometimes the word mantra will be used and sometimes dharani, when dharani is used, the meaning is an all-encompassing upholder.